Hi folks, hope you're doing well today. So India has seen the rise of some pan-India ideologues as of late who don't believe in Aryan or Dravidian and they're attempting to whitewash the history of South Asia in much the same way the British did. They don't believe that any mixing with any outsiders happened, everything's indigenous, there is a national pride paradigm behind what's happening, but it also has to do with economic reasons. Many in the Indian establishment, many people in the Indian establishment, now see the Aryan invasion theory as being part of the legacy of the former British Raj, and thus have a sense of amnesia and think that the Aryan identity in India was imposed on them. By the British, and this encourages racism and racial division on the subcontinent. The economy also falls into play here because the Indian Brahmins encourage any fraudulent scholarship that proves that they're the natives, like the difference in skin color is due to the different climate of each region and so on and so forth. And the Brahmins participate in this by denying the Aryan invasion themselves so that their privileged status in the caste system can stay intact. Truth be told, most of their ancestry is native, but as the Aryans hybridized with the Neolithic Iranian farmers on impact in Asia, they only they being the modern day indians have about like 30 to 40 percent of their ancestry through that admixture through that hybridization but most of the aryan descent amongst index is found among the brahmins the jats and other northwestern south asian tribes or even biradiris i.e. the Rajputs and Gujars, etc., etc. Though the Aryan input of the Biradiris probably mainly comes from the Hephthalite invasion, there are active separatist movements in India. Groups like the Tamil separatists see the Northern Indians in much the same way as they did with the the British colonists, so the goal is to create a unified national identity where everyone living in the Indian subcontinent has the same common ancestor from north to south, east to west, to fill the chasm that the British left behind after partition. The shortcoming in their theory, however, is that the Indus Valley civilization was formed by Neolithic Iranian farmers, who were also outsiders, and it was in the center of Indo-European civilization. North and South India share the same mutual haplogroup found in South Central Asia, Central Asia, and Eastern Europe. The Dravidians themselves, like the Tamils, are also migrants from the outside. They're the descendants of the Iranian Neolithic farmers. That's the reality. So this whole movement, this whole like phenomenon going on, is 100% politically driven and it's inspired by anti-colonial resentment and it's ruining India's reputation since it's now in the business of falsifying history. And it's not just a bunch of individual crackpot nationalist academics that are in the business of falsifying the topic of the Indo-European migration and the Proto-Indo-European or HIMAT, but academics that are part of the establishment. They're not pariahs ignored as a bunch of not jobs. Corruption is increasing in India, and if they're trying to convince separatists on how non-artificial, if they're trying to convince separatists how non-artificial their state is, they're succeeding in making them think the exact opposite. And this is where I end my dissertation. Thank you for watching.